So, we'll see if you like it. Dreams are only nightmares when they don't come every single night. When you're used to waking up from memories of killing someone, the sight of your palms dripping with things you'd rather not look at, the taste of the death rattle of someone you loved caught between your teeth, all of it colored by a body scent as familiar to you as your own. The bar for new nightmares is set pretty high. Tonight was the same river of blood, my body sinking and bobbing as I dog paddle through the thick liquid toward a non-existent shore. Things from the depth brushed against my thighs and stomach, wrapped around my ankles and wrists. I struggled free, trying not to see their faces, and, awoke, and woke up, dripping with sweat, tangled in my old threadbare blanket. The glass was still on my nightstand, and I poured the dregs of amber liquid down my throat, screwed my mouth up at the room temperature and bitterness of it, but I could feel the warmth spreading through my limbs, chasing away the worst of the pain. Laying back on the mattress, I closed my eyes, knowing sleep wouldn't return. The sound of a knock at the door jerked me from bed. No one came to visit me. No one. Not that I didn't have friends, I just met them other places. Whenever I invited her over, Susie said she'd spend enough time in dank hell holes to last her the rest of her life. The others agreed with her. My state force therapist thought I'd chosen the place as some sort of act of self-flagellation. Like most of her revelations, it made me want to roll my eyes forever. As if that weren't fucking obvious to anyone with a pulse, and most of those without it. The knock sounded again and I leapt up from the bed. If one of them had come here, something had to be wrong. So I struggled to unlock the five bolts crookedly and badly ins installed in the rotting wood as quickly as possible. I finally flung the door open and immediately wished I hadn't. Arthur Leopold Banks? Oh, fuck me, really? You just took me in last week. Of all the things I wanted to do today, talking to the police while wearing a stained tank top and boxers, so worn and tight I had to shift my hips to keep them from seeing things that they weren't allowed to see yet, ranked right below a silver nitrate enema. One was a young puppy, mid-twenties, dark curly hair and tan skin that spoke of at least one parent from the Eastern European mountains. His trench coat was creased, just so, and his lips were twisted into what I was sure was a religiously practiced smirk. All bark and no bite, so I dismissed him entirely. The woman, on the other hand, bared watching, she looked to be in her late 40s. A long but faded scar covered one dark cheek from eyebrow to chin, and her afro was graying at the temples. And it was lopsided, as if she hadn't had time to comb it out lately. She cocked her head at my response and smiled. One hand hovered near her gun, but her stance was relaxed. She was an old war dog. I could tell from the way she looked at me. She wouldn't bark to warn me, no, the first thing I'd know when I pissed her off would be the presence of her teeth at my neck. I could see it in the way she watched me while she let her partner talk, satisfied to take the back seat for now. I'm Officer Jen. It was said with the pride of those who've been on the job less than a year. He nodded to his partner. This is Special Inspector Gadesse. Can you come down to the stations with, station with us? I jerked my gaze away from the woman's face and patted my hips looking for a smoke, forgetting I had yet to put on pants. Suddenly I was craving a cigarette and a full tumbler of whiskey. Well, the craving wasn't sudden but it had doubled since I opened the door. Leaving the door open, I limped over to the pack and half full bottle of liquor on the kitchen counter, shook out a single cigarette and lit it up. The police had followed me in. I turned and we observed each other in silence while I took another hit. Does it have to be now? The man sprung forward. Considering we have a bloody, the woman held up her hand and his mouth snapped shut. I smiled around my next inhale. They'd never sent these two before, and against my judgment, I could already feel myself start to like the woman. Her voice was low and smooth, and I found myself leaning forward against my well. We can wait while you get dressed, but there is a dead body and a few questions. Please welcome Laura Del Fuego.